Okay, let's keep this turned. I like this. Jix should hopefully be able to let us get a few cards into hand. Rakdos is, is very strong, but it's six mana and it does die to removal just like a lot of stuff. But yeah, against Rakdos, they're going to have a lot of removal as well. Not sure what to really play out here because Ashdor's intervention does return one of our guys. So I think playing Gix and keeping up the intervention is actually pretty good here because it's it's likely they have a removal spell of sorts and the Ashdor's intervention does allow one of our creatures to come back from death or exile. So this is actually, this is actually really good. <laughs> one black instant. And it gives it plus two power boost, so it can block something which is five toughness and kill it as well. Oh god. Oh god. They can play it right now. Oh, that's so disgusting. Uh, I think they might have just got us here. They're just going to start drawing two cards each turn. Three. Okay, fine. We actually got super lucky there. So now they're not going to be able to cast it for a while. They did spend six mana to draw two, I guess. Now, if we draw a black source, I would really like an untapped black source. Oh, look. Perfect. Now we have a chance. I probably would have quit there if I didn't have removal. Because, yeah, that's just too much to take that early. Duke of Bog. And I really want them to actually kill it here. Ugh. Okay. Rummy Throne. What? Oh, it's a triggered ability. Okay, cheeky. Power word kill. Yeah. Oh, it's all types. We can't kill it because it's a demon. Well, that's annoying. That's an interesting way to get around power word kill, isn't it? Well, now they can choose if they want to block this or not. We are bigger than you, my friend. Yes, come on. Mana, please get mana. We're going to draw a card as well. Oh, wow. This is taking us to victory. This is Disfigure Night Clubber. Can't play that yet. Okay, yeah, we're in a good situation. I wonder how many other demons have with triggered abilities. It's going to be interesting to find out. Also, Pro Red and Green is good for us as well because it means we can target it with black spells. <laughs> I've been victim to that before. Sometimes it's best to have swords that are protection from colours not in your own deck just in case you want to do something weird sacks a creature highest power to counters and lifelink okay well so this will bring it back oh it says return to his hand doesn't it okay fine well I guess it's still good so they've got a Six sinks life linker. Gains life link at the end of turn. Okay. Okay. It's annoying. This will make them choose here. I mean, we could just double block this. So our creatures have a wither. So if we double block this, we do get to draw a card as well. Although if they attack, it's likely they have a kill spell because they could force us to double block and then they kill one of these with a non-combat spell and then we would lose two things. So if they attack, actually, we, we don't block. So it is annoying they've got a 6-6, six, six, though. 5-6-7. Uh, now they're going to feed the swarm. Yeah, that's a shame. But if they attack, we can... We can still attack with... Massacre Girl and Sword, I suppose. Yeah, it's just a shame. We we really are behind with the power word kill here because we can't target the commander or the throne. It's weird how the throne is a creature. A chair is a creature. And they're just coming in. They don't really care. They're going to take us to 11. Or... Double strike. What the hell? What the hell is this deck? I really have no idea. Double strike. Okay. 
That's kind of crazy. Come on, we need something good here. Liliana? Something? No? Blood artist. Okay, well, that's something, I suppose. Well, at least we have two blockers. I need two kill spells. Three, four, five, six, seven. If they play a land, they get Rakdos and they can draw four cards. And then we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, as if they're just riding the throne all the way home. What changed it for us? I suppose the Gix has come on was pretty big, wasn't it? Because it meant that they get the, they got the lifelink swing, which means they're at 12. Normally, they'd be on six right now. Well, they're... <laughs> What are they going to do now? Give it double strike trample? Or is it going to be a board wipe? Man, I wish there was some power on the blood eyes because that would have a minus one counter on it right now. Crooks of fate. Well, that's interesting because it means that although it destroys all non dragons or all non dragons, the roaming throne was all types dragon and non dragon. Which means it killed either way. Okay, let's turn this online. Please don't have a kill spell. If they have a kill spell, then... We're going to be in trouble here. Because we need to get some value, something. How patient are they? Are they waiting to the final moment here? Oh man, I'm at the edge of my seat. This is tense. Hmm, there's a lot of hesitation there, as if there was potentially something that they could have done. Scytherix. Well, we might as well play that, even though we don't have the regeneration or the or the uh, the haste, because these two aren't going to be that useful. What have they got? Demand answers. Okay. Oh, I did have the hate. Yeah, well, it was past the combat phase. And also the infect. What was I going to... Oh, they're saying that. That would have been 4 plus 6 infect. Oh, it's a tap land as well. 5, 6, 7. The one-off Rakdos. Do they have an answer here? If they kill the Scytherix, then it means that we can still swing in with the Guardian Idol. Potentially. Man, that, that double strike really did a dirty one on us. Minus five. Okay, so there's the Scytherix down and out. That's a shame. So we definitely couldn't have regenerated that either way. So Guardian Idol... You know, Guardian Idol has done this for me a few times now. The, the potential of uh, Manlands is really high. So that we potentially have lethal next turn if we get removal or something. Ooh... Massacre Girl and Yorgmoth. I guess we go for Yorgmoth. And then we can move the sword over right now, to be honest. Or six. Okay. Or six. That ain't gonna cut it though, is it? Hmm. Not sure what to do. Two power by himself. Got one mana open. So we can deal. Yeah, I don't really know what to do. So they're going to draw two. Dread Presence with no swamps. Make it a 4-4. Four, four. What? They quit. I guess we could have played the Dread Presence, sacrificed it to give it minus one, sacrificed the Guardian to give it minus one, four, four, then we attack and they've got no blockers. That was a really close game. I think we would have had enough mana for that. Yeah, pay four for this. Sacking is free, but we lose one life each time. Minus two, force the block. And that would have been pretty awesome. Shame about this card not having any activity this game. But yeah, that, I think we did pretty well in that technical game there. Today we're looking at Massacre Girl, Known Killer. Something that I've actually really enjoyed in playtesting. Mono Black is always one of my favourite colours to use. She's a really powerful creature, to be honest. Bringing back an ability we haven't seen in years. I think 
since law in perhaps or maybe maybe something after that but yeah wither is interesting so you have infect which puts counters on players and creatures you've got toxic which puts counters on players and you've got wither which only puts them on creatures so we have the whole range now which is pretty beautiful i love the way design works like that and that's when design is at its best in my opinion when there's patterns symmetry asymmetry logic so yeah creatures you can do have wither i'm really not bothered about that despite me just talking about it i'm more bothered about the fact that whenever creature or opponent dies if its toughness was less than one for a card now that's a weird sounding ability so how do we how do we make that work well the deck is essentially uh minus x minus x deck now we don't really want our creatures to do this because creatures are actually very unreliable so we have a plethora of cards like meat hook massacre grasp of darkness which is offering all manner of things that just give minus x minus x and the reason they're not on creatures is creatures just they don't allow us to target removal very easily there are a few little things like festering mummy but i don't really have too many of these because it's not a sacrifice deck and normally decks that want to get rid of these creatures are more aristocratic in nature so unless you're going to be running more support like Yorgmoth and some other things i'll probably go for the minus ability there's a few other cards as well which do care about the minus and it's on top of big things villis is one of them lets you kill creatures for one black Give something minus minus one, which is pretty cool. Scytherix is the only infector in the whole uh, game, I'm pretty sure. It's pretty awesome. Invasion of Innistrad is pretty sick. Comes and gives something minus 13. But yeah, you get the picture Lang, which is also really good. We've got a few other spicy things as well, which synergize really crazily well together. Knight of Souls Betrayal, if this is out and your opponent has those one ones, and you have Massacre Girl out and you kill like three, four, five of their things, you're going to draw so many cards, combine it with Kevek, and against opponent's elf decks, they're just screwed. There's nothing they can do. And it's absolutely brutal to combine this and this. Now, Kevek does hurt your own creatures, so be careful. But yeah, let's see how this deck does. I really, I get really excited with Mono Black. I'm definitely a Black Mage. Definitely Black X Mage. So, yeah, let's see how we do in today's video. Deck take at the end. Don't forget. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Let's, let's watch to the end. I feel like we have the start of a really trolly hand here. If they have lots of weenies, this is going to be incredible. Because I've got two effects that give minus one, minus one blanket effect. Now, the only issue here is that obviously Amalia does get really big. And that, that is a bit worrying. Because um, then we are going to need us to straight up board wipe or kill spot to target her. But this should hit the rest of their stuff pretty well. Another creature enters, gain one life. Okay, so it's got ward, pay three life, and that's going to come back. So I think this is fine to just get rid of that for now. I just, yeah, I want to get rid of the Kai's Goes form, basically. It's only three life, three mana, and a card to do that. But it's it's it has to be done. It's going to come back anyway. Why did that not trigger last turn? Whenever you gain life, explore. Oh, because the explore only... Oh, right. I, yeah, I get it. I get it. Aether Flux Reservoir. Jeez. Okay. Nation's Landing Meat Hook Massacre. Well, they're not going to be using the Meat Hook Massacre, are they? Surely. Um, Let's go for the Soul's Betrayal here. Elenda will instantly die if she comes in now. Um, which is pretty sick. <laughs> what does this one do? Case. I hate cases. I really do not like cases. Game one life. Game five more life. Sacrifice. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So they've only got me Massacre in the hand. So I'm thinking maybe give a Massacre Girl. Next. Gee, she's getting big. That's crazy. Liliana, okay. Makes all each opponent's graveyard. Hmm, I suppose we can... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe go for Scytherix? I'm not sure. Scytherix would weaken her a bit. Or we could go for Kevek. 
Mm, but then Scytherix would... No, let's go for Massacre Girl. Yeah, that's fine. Because we've got Ashnod Intervention. Which means that we're going to get plus two power. Isn't that Lender just going to die instantly? So she dies, which means we get to draw a card. This is pretty sick synergy here with the Souls Betrayal. So then they get a 1-1 one, one that comes in and then, and then dies again, right? Or did that not happen? I'm not sure. It keeps surveilling that to the top. Shambling Ghast. That's going to come in, instantly die again. That's a 10. Oh my god. We're in a lot of trouble here. So that dies... Kind of a combo deck, isn't it, Amalia? So many goddamn triggers. We get it. We really want Mithril Coat. I get it. Okay? Right, now, can you stop doing triggery things? So, Wither. There's going to be five minus counters on there. So it's down to seven. Lines. That comes back to hand. And how do we get around this? Now, this, the scary part is if we go for... If we go for Liliana, they can just meet Hook Massacre for... X minus... To kill that. How do we get around this? Skithrix and Regenerate won't work either because it sucks. I'm not sure what to do unless we go Massacre work, Massacre Girl. Actually, yeah, I think I think that works because now we can use the Brutality to get rid of the mass, the Meat Hook. Reveal minus, yeah. Kill that. And we're going to discard a few things here. So we'll discard 4, 5, 6. Skitherix and the land. Because we're still going to have two lilies after this. Oh no, it's not. An ah, it doesn't discard enchantments, does it? Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I was thinking it discarded a card. No, it, dis it discards instant or sorcery. Yeah, fair enough. So the thing is, if they do go for the Meat Massacre, then it it does weaken Amali for the turn. In. So well, they are going to do it anyway. But it will kill the core celebrant, so we do draw a card. Okay. I think we might be okay, you know. Because we have the Professor Onyx now. Oh, I love I love getting out of these technical technical situations. We've got no man lands to see as well. Oh my goodness, we got so lucky here. We got so lucky. Oh, they're saying that they do have the Sorin. Ugh. Yeah, this is not good. The Sorin can drain us. They're just going to recast. Meat Massacre is also probably going to kill us. Ugh, gross. So we need instant or sorcery, really? There's going to be a two. Oh no, Blood Artist. I'm worried now. I'm very worried. Six, seven, eight. I guess we've got Blood Artist. Which drains. Takes us to three. <laughs> yeah, I completely forgot about that. I guess we go for Kavak. To kill the Amalia. Yeah, I completely forgot about the Knight of Souls Betrayal. Yeah, this is going to screw us over really bad. Down to two. Go for York Moth. Oh, damn you, I completely forgot. We're going to die. We're going to die. Sorin takes us down to one. I have come for which is terrible. Blood. Damn it. Damn it. 
We are in so much trouble now. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. So if we use Professor Onyx, we die. Ah, oh, the freaking Sarin got us. I really thought we had that. What did we do wrong? What did we do wrong? I don't know. We can proliferate three times. How do we gain life? We can't. Um, yeah, we're just dead, aren't we? Sorin is a cheeky bastard. I feel really sad. I actually feel I feel really sad. Even with all these Lilianas. I guess when we create a zombie, it dies. We draw a card. If it's a spell, we can survive, potentially. Maybe I should have sat two creatures and drawn two cards there. God damn it. Another swamp. If I'd sacked two creatures there, I would have lost both of my guys. Uh, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> oh no, you son of a bitch, Sorin. No, what do we do? Yeah, we're just dead. We can't even kill the Sorin because we only have two power. Um, how did we get so low? I don't. Re I don't even remember get how I got this low. Did they just hit us that hard that often? I guess they did. Yeah. Okay. Um, if that said Walker, that would have been pretty odd. Oh, I know what it was. It was the Meat of Massacre, wasn't it? Because they kept draining us for one. Yeah, okay, fine. Go full control. <laughs> Does that help? Probably not. Because you have to lose a life as part of the activation. Blunk. Yeah, so that we would have actually had that eventually, but... Oh, well. Shame. God damn it. Sometimes you put in a situation it's just impossible to get out of. Even though you think it's... Uh, sometimes you can draw the best stuff, but if the opponent's drawing best stuff plus one, yeah, that's it. I'm going to quickly interrupt this video to tell you this video is not sponsored. And because of that, the channel does need help from people like you. So if you do want to support the channel in your own way, you can like and subscribe, which is completely free. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can donate to the channel via my Ko-fi link below or become a channel patron. And if you become a channel patron, you can get a custom video of your choice. Check out the details below. I really like the starting hand. It's got potential. Dread Presence plus Shieldred can be pretty good as well. Losing life to draw cards and then getting life to draw cards, always a nice synergy. So with that in mind, I'll play the non-swamp first, as weird as that is. I know this has the most utility, but there's more synergy if we play non-swamps before the Dread Presence comes out. Signet means I can get on that in the next turn, which is not great, but then we do have Join the dead to give it minus five. So they do choose to go on math. We have removal for it. Okay, they've gone for Tapland and Realm Breaker, which tells me they might have Praetors. Uh, right, let's go for the sword here. We can't guarantee they're going to play a legend, let alone the commander. They didn't last turn, so they might just be more focused on milling us and getting our lands here. Skyclave Relic. What on earth are they? Trying to ramp into here. If it kicks. There's no point in going for the Dread Presence yet anyway, because we didn't have a swamp to play with it right away. Man, Realm Break is so annoying. I hate this card. <laughs> it being mill milled and stolen. It's like two horrendous things in one that you don't want to see. Mythos of Nathroy, okay. One, two, three, four. So they could go for the end. There we go. I'll just reborn. Um, I guess we'll just do this here. It's good timing, to be honest, and we can get kicks back eventually, or maybe something better. Yeah, it's always sad to miss out on the Dread Presence card draw, but you have to play against your opponent's field, really. You don't want to be just dawdling. like That would have wasted our entire turn just doing that. Hmm. 
Make them discard. Oh, counter spell. Okay. Does that mean they have another kill spell or another counter spell, perhaps? Just going to mill us more swamps. Yeah, this is scaring me. How many Praetors do they have in their deck? You know, that. how much mana do they need? Six, seven, eight. They are so close to this flipping. I mean, I don't know how we're going to stop this if they do have Praetors. And I, I imagine they have Praetors because why would they use this unless they, they were doing that? Some more team. Yeah. It is a bit boring to lose to this, but oh well, at least it's a bit different than usual. Death Sprout, well, they're definitely going to be able to round break in next turn then. And there's. You've got Urobrask with haste, so they probably just die. They probably. Sorry. They probably just kill us if they, if they use this. How can we interact with the artifacts and our colours? It's the only thing we can't really. I mean, we can even deal with enchantments more than artifacts now. I can't think of a black card that hurts this. I mean, there is like an uncommon five mana that exiles a creature, vehicle. Um, yeah, we'll go for Gix. Or artifact, maybe, but yeah, I'm not sure. Um... Okay, let's draw some cards. I know it's before shield is out, but I just need to get some potential. Okay, well, I suppose... Uh, the thing I'm more worried about now is Jinkitaxius as well, because it's going to stop us. Oh, Grim Tutor, okay. I suppose that's pretty lucky. Yeah, if they get their seven mana Jinkitaxius, that means that they're going to counter our spells. Once per turn, so we can't even hit the... Urabrask that gives them all haste. If they don't have all the Praetors, well... Okay, maybe not then. They just paid seven to draw one card. A bit odd. That was a bit odd, I have to admit. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They had the mana. Hmm, curious. Okay, so we would like some of our own lands, please, because currently the on <laughs> quite a few of our lands. Come on, let's go. Get some lands. Two lands on top. They they certainly like doing things when priority is just there. It's like there's no tactical advantage to just doing that there, but All right. Draw a card as well. Extinction event, that could be good. Land. Go for the cold still heart. Not too bothered about festering mummy here. And actually, the more mana we have at the better because we can also use Gix's ultimate as such. They didn't want to use the treasures to activate the realm breaker, probably because they want to draw cards with the treasure cove. The one ring. Oh man, I mean, that was a really crazily lucky top deck from them there, considering they, they already have treasure cove. Which is sort of like a very slow version of the One Ring. So they've already got protection, which means we can't target them. So Gix is disabled here. Shieldred might be nice to just deal some damage to them, because protection doesn't do anything against that. Ooh, okay, they're giving us Price of Fame. We can target that. And I think surveying lands to the top would be nice. As I said, I just want to hit lands. Yeah, that's fine. So what we could do is go for Dread Presence. Place one, draw a card, or go for Shieldred. Might be better. Not really sure. Draw a card, deal damage. Actually, yeah, we'll go for Dread Presence. Deals two damage to any target. Okay, so we're not going to target then. We're just going to draw. Because we can't target them anyway, because they've got one ring protection this turn. Mm. <laughs> I suppose we go for Shieldred. They've got the one ring. So they're going to have to draw a card now unless they want to take two damage from Shieldred. 
So just basically forcing their hand. They'd rather do that. Weird. I mean, they do have the treasures. No attacks, because we won't deal any combat damage anyway. There's no point. But yeah, they got super lucky there, because they stopped our geeks attacking, getting our sword triggers, and in addition, the ability that targets them. They stopped three things there. And if they do use round break here, it makes me wonder why they didn't use round breaker earlier. So do they have praetors in the deck? I have no idea. No. Huh. Strange. So now they draw cards, they lose life with this. Okay. Now they're in a lot of trouble. They are in a lot of trouble. Um, let's damage them. Strange deck because although they have Omnath, they've not used a single card. Oh no, sorry, they've used Seagate Restoration with triple mana pips. Three or more colored symbols. They've used one card so far. The synergy is just not there, is it? It's just not there. So what can we do? Okay. We could even use Gix. If we really wanted to. Or is that just... Let's just go feed the swarm. Let's, let's play it safe. Because <clears throat> we want to use removal spells, really. Yeah, okay, man, that was strange. Who who has a five color Omnath deck with the Rambreaker and not all the Praetors? Just unusual. I mean, I guess it terrified me the whole game. So the fear factor was there. So I guess I had to respect it. But it just feels like the min maxing wasn't quite there. I mean, yeah, you could say use it for fun, but most people who have Omnath decks don't. Most people who have Omnath decks are in for a real they're cruising for a bruising. If if I see this is on the decks where if I see, I will hit it with absolute impunity. Especially if they're using the one ring, you know, no mercy whatsoever. So there's a few factors here that made this battle a bit strange. I feel like maybe the deck, maybe they downloaded the deck and they just haven't piloted it yet. Or maybe they made it from scratch and it's a bit odd. But then again, it seems a bit, I don't know, the cards feel a bit sweaty to be accidentally made. I mean, these cards are all very sweaty cards. Off, you can't refuse. Assemble, Grim Tutor, Seagate and the one ring. Who knows? That's just my analysis, but that's why you're here, right? I'm giving you my thoughts, my analysis, and if you don't like it, well, you know where to go. <laughs> I am reminded that sometimes a monocolor deck still can have a lot of complexity, and it's something I do tend to forget from time to time. I'm so drawn to two color, three color decks that you just forget that sometimes, yeah, mono black, it's got a lot of layers, a lot of stuff going on here. I'm still sad about that Liliana game I had when I lost against the Sorin. Oh man, haunting, haunting. It's it's um it's that feeling of loss that does push me forward. It does make me want to be a better player, and that's what's always driven me as a player. Losing is important, hundred percent. If you don't lose, you don't learn anything. You honestly don't. Probably, I probably think that a lot because I've had a loss, a lot of losses in my life, and I've had to learn to deal with them in one way or another through anger, through sadness. So it probably makes me a smarter person, not necessarily happier, but. I've traded intelligence for sadness, I suppose, which is a bit depressing when you think about it. But but yeah, that's why I like to include the losses. A lot of the bigger YouTubers don't do that. I know people like to see victories. I, I completely understand. But if you don't see the losses, it's just not realistic because there's no way you're going to win every game on Arena. It's impossible. There's no way you can win any game consecutively. All of them. I mean, you know, even the professional players, they will lose the majority of the games. Not majority, but I think it's close. To, it's close. It's something like pros only win 55% of their games. That's 5% from from half. You know, it's it's a low it's a low amount of games. Um, but but if you are bad at magic, the loss percentage is even higher. So it's all about context at the end of the day. You know, you could be the world's best player, but you might be the world's worst deck builder. So it's about honing each of those skills separately. But yeah, no, enough about that. This deck was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And I just wish it wasn't $15 in paper because I, I kind of want one, even though I don't have a deck she goes in. You just kind of, you feel compelled to like certain characters because artwork, history. She's just really cool. I think she's, it's just awesome, right? She just 
anything that says draw a card is awesome. It reminds me a bit of Yorgmoth, and together, obviously, they work together in a ridiculously broken way because you'll be drawing, you'll be sacking one of your guys, putting a counter on their guys, draw a card when their guy dies, and you draw a card when your guy um, dies. It's, it's crazy combined with your work together. And then, obviously, if you give them one's counter, you can proliferate by discarding a card that you just drew to. It's just like a really powerful synergy engine, which is just absolutely wonderful. Some of the star plays in the deck, you saw the Kevac doing his job there with the Knight of Souls Betrayal, but don't forget, it hits your creatures as well, which I forgot with Blood Artist. Um, there was probably a line where I could have played that differently, maybe played, I don't know, played something else than Blood Artist. But yeah, it, it was complicated. It's um, Amalia, de, whatever her name is, Amalia. She's, she's tough. She's a tough one to be. She's so aggressive, goes up so quick. Uh, what else is to say about that? You just keep loads of minus abilities in the deck. I don't think the deck needs creatures at all, to be honest. If I'm if I'm being honest, you can just have fully removal. I know it's a bit it's a bit mean, but you, you could just have her and lots of rule spells. It's more interesting to have creatures, but yeah, I think it's a really fun offering I have here. Mono black is where is is where I'm at. This channel's at, you know, that's where you come for the stuff. Um for historic brawl anyway. But yeah, the deck list is in the description below. If you want to support the channel, that would be nice. I don't really get much support these days, to be honest. So you can become a channel patron, get your own custom videos, or support by Kofi. Um, I know a lot of people are broke, and it's you know recession and whatever. But yeah, it you know just helps. I'm just asking, and if you can give, that's fantastic. In the meanwhile, if you want to support me by not paying any money at all, just watch another video. It really helps. Like, subscribe, pushes the algorithm, pushes me out there. Just get me more views. That's free, completely free. Did you know that you can help my channel by watching another one of my videos? Go ahead, you know you want to.